Hello, welcome back to Adventure All The Way. My name's Emma and I'm a homeschooling mum of three in the UK and I'm so glad you've joined us. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new here, I am so pleased you're here and I hope you stick around. So today we're gonna to be talking about goal setting and assessments in home education. Now, I get often get messages or posts or comments from people saying how do I know what level curriculum to start my child at without testing them because they've had so much testing at school they don't want any more testing I don't want to test them anymore how do I know how do I know so let's talk about the assessment first because that's the most um, asked question that I have on this topic and firstly it's reasonably simple and it's not going to feel like a test it's not going to feel like an assessment um let's just say your child would have started year five like this week and you've decided to deregister them you deregistered them yesterday you went nope had enough and pulled them out of school so obviously they missed half of year four and you don't want them to have the kind of school kind of situation anymore it's all done okay so firstly you need six months of de-schooling that's why I'm gonna tell you whether you do that or not is up to you but that is really my advice to anyone who messages me about deregistering de-school 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 just let your child follow their interests just chill out just play on the Xbox go for walks go swimming all of the things that you are allowed to do right now but and want to do just do them just spend time together like really get to know your child on a deeper more personal level what's their fourth favorite color like ha like just whatever you know like just just what's their second favorite dinosaur what's their eighth favorite dinosaur like let's just learn all about your children more so than you've ever done before and really just spend time with them what makes them tick what do they want to learn about what makes them excited answer those questions in your head over the next six months and then I would then I would suggest that you go to somewhere like Poundland, Pound Stretcher, Home Bargains, Lidl, Aldi, wherever they sell those really thin, like 50p workbooks. I think you can quite often get them from like Home Bargains and the works, that sort of thing. Nothing big, like 20 pages, 30 pages, something like that. They're usually like 50p, 80p, something like that. They're they're really cheap. And then get the year. So say this child, we're talking about a child who's gonna be, who would have been in year five, get year four, get year three, get year two, okay? Um, maybe get year five as well. You've spent probably two pounds, okay? Then give them the year four book, the book where they are to their age that's a year behind. If they zoom through that, like they're a little genius and should be, you know, on the chase, then, <laughs> then you know that they're probably ready for year five level curriculum. And then after your, and then, you know, once you've done your de-schooling, you can move them on to that. However, if they struggle with year four, reasonably simply move them back down, then give the year three workbook a try. If they zoom through that really easily, then you know that they should be on year four. If they struggle with year three, again, you've guessed it, down, down to year two. If they struggle with that, keep going down until you find the book that's easy. And then do the next, do the next level up. That's the curriculum where I would suggest you start at. Now, if your child's been is very young and you're going, but they don't know how to read yet, then scrap all of that and stay tuned because I will be talking in a few weeks' time about teaching children to read and home educating preschoolers. And to me, a preschooler is a child who is six and under. Um, because they, I do like doing some things with them, but it's not formal, it's just fun. So yeah, there we go, that's what I'm saying for assessments. Do these little tiny workbooks and assess where they are. They've got like stickers in, they've got colouring pages, they've got all this kind of stuff, they're not testing, it doesn't feel like testing, and that's the most important thing. Um, you can go on to Twinkle and you can get SATs pages if, they, if you think they're supposed to be going to year three, give them a SATs paper to do, but then it feels like a test, doesn't it? Um, or if they've done SATs, go off their SATs, but I think SATs were cancelled this year, weren't they? So, um, yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Now, goal setting. 
I've done it again, haven't I? I've gone goal, assessment, goal setting and assessments, and then I've talked about the second thing first. So, <laughs> goal setting. Now, I firmly believe that you as the parent, I mean, if you were in my house, if you were educating my children, goal setting. So, with my guys, being eclectic, having some unschooling, and then having some Reggio, and then having some Wardorf, and having some Charlotte Mason, and everything else, all of this kind of schmush that makes our home education life, um, I set their goals for English and Maths. That's what I do, based on assessing through the year. And I do that by going, did you find this easy? Yes. Tick. <laughs> That's fine, like, we can bump you up, or whatever. Um, and doing these little workbooks, doing the Brain Quest summer books, and, and, and so on. Like, I don't make it like, sit down, take this chest. Um, so their goal setting is based on that for English and Maths. Like, Bessie's goals this um, academic year are to learn to, is to learn to read. That's literally it. She has no other goals. Because she's really, really good at maths, and she'll just go, whom, zoom through the maths curriculum. So she won't need um, to catch up. Whereas... Um, and on reading she really needs that, reading and writing she really needs a push and that's what our focus is right now. So hers is to learn to read by this time next year, which she can do it, she just needs confidence. So we're all good. Um, whereas Charles's goals are to be able to write a letter independently between now and next year. And I'm not expecting the spelling to be perfect, I'm expecting his writing stamina to be higher, I'm expecting his confidence to be higher. Um, his punctuation to be on point because he's almost there with that um and his spelling to be mostly right the common sight words the tricky words you know the high frequency words i'm expecting them to be correct um so that's what we're working on for him um again that's not um you know year four and year two work which is the academic year they would be in if they were at school um it's according to their ability and their age in which they started formal schooling um, their goal setting for everything else is set by them. So they've said they want to learn about volcanoes this year. They want to be able to make their own electrical circuits. They want to be able to understand basic chemical reactions. They want to learn about Australia. They, and, and they want to learn about mammals. And they want to learn about reptiles. They want to do marine, learn about marine, basic marine biology and things like that. So they are setting their own goals and I am facilitating them. Which is kind of an unschooly thing. Um, so that's... That's how they're setting their goals. And I really feel like my children learn best when they're setting their own goals alongside me setting goals for them. Um, I don't tell them their English and maths goals as well. I don't tell them that. I keep that to myself. I tell their dad. Um, <laughs> and I might tell other adults that, that are you know, on the same journey, but I won't discuss it with them because I don't want to add pressure or demands to them. But the goals that they've set for themselves I feel it's important that they then share and that they, you know, have a record of it um, and like on and then kind of hold themselves accountable and I can help them be accountable, but I'm not going to like force the situation, um, which is why the looping basket is not compulsory um, and all of the subjects within that. Um, yeah. So, and like the nature study doesn't really have goals. It's just to be at home in nature and enjoy nature. So. There you go. I have a bit of exciting news coming up. I am trialing adding a second video each week. So you will have a home ed video once a week, every week. You will then hopefully also have another video about something else. I'm going to, I've given it the, the overall umbrella title of lifestyle. Um, it's likely to be vlogs and other things about my life in general, rather than just homeschooling. But homeschooling is such a big part of my life, there'll probably be a crossover. But it'll be more things like um, stuff to do stuff to do with the kids and stuff to do with the horses and stuff to do with the dog and, 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 and just other bits in my life. Um, I'm also going to share some of some New Forest Commoning. If you don't know what that is, check out, have a little Google and type New Forest Commoners. Uh, you will get a wealth of information from the Real New Forest website. So, um, I have had a lovely time chatting with you today and I'm really excited to catch up with you on Thursday ah, for our second video of the week and we're going to see how that goes, whether I can commit to that. I'm committing to it for a month and then we'll see if I can keep it up. <laughs> have a great day guys and I will see you later in the week. Bye!